Let's take a look at a few working programs to give you an idea of the sorts of things you might see. Now a really common program that exam boards and computer scientists alike enjoy talking about is a program that can generate the Fibonacci sequence. I imagine that at some point you've heard of this already. It's a number series where we calculate the value of the current number by adding up the value of the previous two. We start with 0 and 1, just because we do, then each other number is calculated. The next value in the sequence is 0 plus 1 which is 1, the next value is 1 plus 1 which is 2, then we go for 1 plus 2, 3, and then 2 plus 3 giving 5, and then 3 plus 5 giving 8, and so on and so on. You get the idea. If you want a more comprehensive explanation then jump onto Wikipedia, but the code you'll see is designed to generate this sequence by adding together the last two numbers and repeating that forever. Here's a nice 11 line long implementation of that. You'll see down in lines 10 and 11 we've already got those first two values stored, 0 on line 10 and 1 on line 11. Now let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on and we'll set the assembler off to start its fetch decode execute loop. Ok, so line 1 is a load command, it's going to load the data value from line 11 and place it in the accumulator. That data value is the number 1, so that gets copied over. Our next instruction asks us to add the contents of line 10 to the value in the accumulator. That gives us a sum of 0 plus 1, with an answer of 1 which gets placed back in the accumulator. Line 3 is an output instruction placing the value from the accumulator onto the screen, and that's the number 1 in our code. Line 4 uses an instruction we've not seen for a while, that's the store instruction. It will take the value from the accumulator and store it in this case the operand is 10, meaning that it will save the value 1 from the accumulator in the data value on line 10, and that's copied across. We've got an add instruction next, adding together the data values in line 11 to the accumulator. This gives us the sum of 1 plus 1, with an answer of 2, which is stored in the accumulator. Out is our output instruction, placing the number 2 on the user's screen. Line 7 is another store instruction, this time placing the value of the accumulator in line 11, so that copies across and we're on to our next line. Line 8 is a branch instruction, now remember this is a control instruction, so it changes how the program runs. It sets the value of our program counter to 2, so that when the next fetch part of the cycle happens, it loads line 2 as our next instruction. Now we're immediately back to adding together the value of the accumulator with the data at line 10. Now that gives us a sum of 1 plus 2, where the answer 3 gets put back in the accumulator. This is output on the screen and then stored back on line 10. Line 5 asks us to add together the data on line 11 with the value in the accumulator, giving us a sum of 3 plus 2 and the answer 5 is left in the accumulator for the next instruction, out, to output it to the screen. We have a store instruction next which copies the contents of the accumulator into memory location 11, saving the number 5 there. Then onto the branch instruction again, changing our program counter to point to line 2 so that the next fetch part of the cycle takes us back there, and continues forever outputting every single Fibonacci number in existence. Mind blown. So you can see that a reasonably simple set of instructions when combined with von Neumann architecture and the fetch decode execute cycle creates a program that can calculate an output. How about another example I hear you ask? Well a times table calculator is what I'm going to show you, which will ask the user for a times table and then calculate all of the answers. And that's a reasonably straightforward program, but it also includes a bit of user input. So if we ask ourselves to output the 5 times table for example, we should see the outputs 0, 5, 10 and so on. Now only 8 lines in this one, that seems nice, so let's get started. Our first instruction is an input, 
asking a user to type in a value and then storing that in the accumulator. Now our user has decided they want to see the nine times table. Exciting. So the value nine is placed in the accumulator. Line two stores that value in line seven, replacing what was there already with the number nine. We then load from memory location eight into the accumulator and this puts the number zero there for us to start counting through our times table. Next up is the add instruction, asking us to add the values from line 7 to the accumulator, meaning that sum of 9 plus 0 exists. The answer 9 gets put back into the accumulator. The output commands puts the accumulator value on the screen, showing 9 to our user before going on to the next instruction on line 6, and that's our good friend, the branch instruction. This changes the program counter to point to line 4, so that's where the next fetch part of the cycle is going to take us. Now, we haven't moved too far back this time. In fact, we've moved back just to the add instruction. Adding the value from line 7 to the accumulator, and this results in a sum of 9 plus 9, giving us 18 to place in the accumulator. This value is output to the screen, and then when we move on to the next instruction, we get our branch mnemonic, which changes the program counter to point to line 4 again. When we start with the next loop of the fetch to code execute cycle, it fetches line 4 and we go back there. We're dealing with our add instruction again, giving us the sum of 9 plus 18. The answer of 27 gets stored in the accumulator. This value is output to the screen, and then we're back to our branch instruction again. But you're getting the idea now, so we'll stop.